Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So this video really isn't going to be project related. It's going to be kind of an account of uh, going to yard sales and estate sales. A yard sale that I went to two weeks ago, there was a original owner, 1941 Ford, and as the family started giving me information about the car, they told me about their father and he was the original buyer. The story got more and more interesting as the family member shared about dad. Their father's story was extremely interesting and they was willing to share that story with me. So I thought I would roll it up in a video and share it with you. So hope you enjoy it. I thought this car would be of particular interest. Um, you are looking at a 1941 one owner Ford two door sedan, formerly owned by Robert Carlson, retired Lieutenant Colonel USAF. And his one of his daughters, Crystal, was uh, willing to uh, allow us to look at dad's car and tell us about it. When um, was the last time that he drove this 41? Um, I'm not sure when the last time he drove it was, but about two years ago, I took him out for breakfast at one of the old restaurants here in town. Um, he was still mobile at that time um, and could get in and out of the cars and all. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he went to, uh, we went to Joe and Eddie's and we parked in the parking oh, yeah. lot and I think he talked to people for two hours about this car. No kidding. <laughs> With people stopping to visit him and stuff. Um, he had bought it new. Um, he uh, signed up for the Air Force in, well, I guess Army Air Corps at that point in time, 1941, right after uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, he had the car new. He was a machinist in the Vancouver, Washington, Portland, Oregon area at that point in time. Um, once he went away in the service, the car went up to his parents' house in Elk, Washington. It was a ranch he grew up at. And it stayed there until he got out of the service. When Dad got out of the service, he, he obviously survived World War II. Um, he married uh, my mother in Thomasville, Georgia. And then he went to engineering school at Georgia Tech. While he was at Georgia Tech, he got degrees in uh, mechanical and industrial engineering and was very proud of being a, a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. And I always personally thought that part of the reason for that was the, the Model A mascots and stuff. Uh -huh. right there. Yeah. But um, he then went to work for Ford Motor Company in Atlanta where he watched um, another car roll off the line up there. He was directing one of their um, assembly lines, and it happens to be the 50 that's sitting next. So, and the 50 he kept and then sold, and somebody redid it, and then he bought it back because he missed it. But the 41 has stayed in the family. It stayed up at the ranch in... in uh, Elk, Washington for a long time, and then after Dad moved down here, um, he and I started to uh, drive it down here, actually. We ran into some bearing issues and stuff, and it kind of went back up to the ranch for a while. And then we actually, um, it did get driven down here to Florida a number of years ago. Uh -huh. We had it repainted. Do you remember what the original color was? It was uh, blue on the panels and white on the top. So it was two tone. Two tone. From yeah. from the original. Yeah. Oh man, that tone. that would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that's why there's the blue. The two tone blue, blue on the inside. On the inside. Yeah. And I I was sad when it did away with the blue on it because I thought yeah. that was
So he did a few things with it to make it a little safer. He updated the brakes on it. He put a 12 volt system in so that you can actually drive it a little easier with electronics and stuff and the lights. Yeah. Um, but uh, that cool sticker. It's uh, it's still relatively, you know, original. All the stuff that came with it. Yeah. He spent a lot of time going to car shows and swap meets and. Picking up little things here and there uh -huh. to, to fix things or to make things better. Flathead V8. He enjoyed he enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, that um, what uh, for my viewers here. What originally got us talking about this car was when I looked up in the rafters and saw a 41 grill standing all by themselves, and I was like, "Hey, what are you guys doing with that grill?" They're like, that's for the car in the back, and that's 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 why we're here now. Is because I kept on asking questions about the car and found out that there is one back here. So yeah, this yeah, is, it's solid. Actually, it's the first car I drove. I was probably maybe thirteen or fourteen, and it was up at the ranch, and I could drive it in the tractor tracks there on the property. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, now, when you say the ranch, um, was it like a working ranch? Did you guys have yeah, cattle and? We had cattle and. So, um, was that a family ranch? Yes. That so your dad was a young man, um, working that ranch with his parents. Well, or? no, his uh, mother unfortunately died when he was young, and it was the you know Great Depression. My grandfather was a very skilled machinist, so he traveled around with tools in the back of a um, Model T truck. And mm -hmm. uh, they ended up living out of that truck in uh, Arizona um, for a while. And then they came back up to Spokane, where my dad graduated from Rogers High School in 1938 and is a member of their Hall of Fame there. Oh, um, because of all of his wartime and of his wartime aircraft. Expert, and... You know, exploits and stuff. And he was... When he was inducted into their Hall of Fame, he was very pleased to be able to walk across the, you know, the grounds and the football stadium that night and go to the oh, things man. because everybody else was sort of in memoriam. And he was 90-something years old at that point. So Dad um, joined the Army Air Corps, uh, just like three of his friends did. They were all skiing on Mount Hood the day of... Uh, Pearl Harbor. They went down the mountain and uh, all went to respective places to sign up. He ended up uh, doing well in all of his basic and getting to flight school. Uh, one of his last flight schools was in Thomasville, Georgia, where he met a very pretty young girl at a USO dance that um, they kept in touch. And when they, when Dad came back from the war, like four years later he was able to, they got married uh, in oh, Thomasville. Wow. He wore his uniform and she wore a white shirt made out of his parachute silk. Dad flew uh, a P-51 Mustangs in uh, the um, North Africa theater. He was one of the recon pilots for the invasion at Anzio. And then they went up the, um, up Italy, landing on corrugated medical, metal runways yeah. and stuff all the way up. He actually flew a number of missions, I came to find out later, behind the lines that were sort of super secret at the time. Mm -hmm. I was reading him a book about the last P-51 mission in World War II, which occurred in Japan, and there were some names in that book that he said, oh, I guess I can talk about that now. Uh, declassified. <laughs> it was now declassified. Yeah. So he had kept those secrets for, you know, 70 years. Oh, wow. Um, he, afterwards, um, thankfully, because of the GI Bill, he went and got his engineering degree, like I said, but he missed flying. He was very much a flyer, and when the Korean War came back, he was instantly back in planes, um, Became a, was in one of the Mosquito Squadrons for um, that, and then he stayed on as an instructor and test pilot um, and finished out 30 years in the Air Force, retiring here at Hobart. He was stationed kind of all over. It seemed like every other mm -hmm. duty station when I was growing up was mm -hmm. in Texas, but um, we were also in California and uh, Mississippi and places like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
dad went on to be a instructor and test pilot in jets, um, in props, and actually in helicopters as well. Um, he was one of the guys that helped develop a theory of auto rotation for helicopters when you lose your engine, and yeah. they did that by crashing several of them. Yeah. He had not a great back because mm -hmm. of that issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, but he, he was um, very, very smart, and he followed and kept up um, with details of, you know, all of the flight stuff for years. He was one of the guys that they looked at for the astronaut programs and they wanted him to come and work there, but he was, um, at that point in time, we had just come back from overseas four years in Japan, and mm -hmm. it was the late 60s. Very impressive father Yes, he was. you have there. And, um, and they can look him up. He uh, did uh, oral histories for the Smithsonian. Oh, did he? Yeah, so he's oh, recorded man. in a couple of places for Robert Joseph Carlson. Robert Joseph Carlson, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel, USAF yeah, retired. What yeah, an yeah. awesome life and legacy he's left. All the innovations he was a part of um, during the early years of the United States Air Force. Well, thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, taking the time out. I certainly appreciate it. And, um, you know, it's an honor to be able to hear your father's story and look at his car. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to take good care of it. <laughs> yeah, good deal.